Greetings and welcome to this introductory video regarding strengths of materials or mechanics of materials depending on what course you're taking. This video introduces the concepts of normal and shear stresses and compares the two of them. It is the first of three videos. Uh, this one we're going to simply calculate the normal and shear stresses and uh, see the differences between the two. The next we're going to see if they'll actually work for material we've chosen and then after that we'll talk about uh, additional design factors that we would want to consider and how that's going to affect our design. So for this one uh, I've chosen to uh, show you a clevis. A clevis is a mechanical device that connects two parts in a kind of flexible connection. So you see here is the clevis right here and it has a pin that is connected right here and then the tang is this section here and it continues on out this way. So this could be used to hang something, it could be used to connect uh, a uh, something that's mechanical, driving something else, but there's often some form of tension applied here that is transmitted from one part of the uh, clevis through the clevis pin into the tang uh, or vice versa. Now the clevis I have is fairly simple and here again is the clevis, the pin, and the tang. I have a couple of arrows that will show you that we have a force applied on this clevis uh, across this cross section here. So this creates what's called a normal force. Now uh, since you've taken statics you'll know that I can't just have one force acting alone. It has to be balanced out by another. So I'll show you that one here. So now this is in static equilibrium. So these units are in millimeters here. So this is the basic setup for our problem. Now we'll go to our problem solving sheet here and we will calculate the normal and shear stresses on this assembly. Now the normal force is denoted in strength of materials or mechanics of materials by the Greek letter Sigma and its formula is pretty simple force divided by area. So there's our applied force and we have an area. So our applied force is going to be 30 kilonewtons thirty thousand newtons all over the area. Now the area is going to be again for the normal force it's going to be this rectangle right here that I've got highlighted. So that is 10 millimeters by 20 millimeters. So I'll take that 30,000 newtons or 30 kilonewtons divide by 200 square millimeters and I will get 150 my units are newtons over square millimeters now you ask what's the, what that is for those of you who are more familiar with US units the 30,000 newtons is about 6750 pounds and this 200 square millimeters, that's about 0.3 square inches. Now we end up with newtons per square millimeter. Well, in the SI units, a 
the units of stress and pressure are Pascal. And a Pascal is a Newton per square meter. Well, I've got Newtons per square millimeter. How does that work out? Well, let's do a little math here. And we're going to multiply by 1,000 millimeters for every one meter, right? Okay, well, since this is squared, I have to do this twice. So it's going to be another thousand millimeters for every meter. So now I've got uh, two sets of millimeters here, and I cancel those out with these on top, and I end up with 150 times a thousand times a thousand. Well, that's a million. 150 thousand thousand or a million. What am I left with? Newtons over square meters. Newtons over square meters. Yay! So I have what I was hoping to get is a Newton per square meter. However, this is actually kind of laborious and, and annoying, and it's really not all that helpful because we have all of these zeros, and it's just a big number. Well, this happens a lot, so we want to kind of condense the notation here. If you'll notice, this million stuff here can be shortened into a mega. So we can make this equal to 150 megapascals. We started with 150 newtons per square millimeter and we ended up with 150 megapascals. See, this newton per square meter is a pascal, so we put that there. This million makes a mega and we end up with uh, 150 megapascals. So that's the normal stress on the assembly. Now shear stress is denoted using the Greek letter tau. And it's also force over area, but this is the area in shear. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go back over to our assembly here and let's look at the pin. Let's just imagine that the pin was a block of string cheese. Everything else is like some kind of metal, but this is string cheese and it's just going to be pulled apart, but not really pulled apart. It's going to be cut right here and right here. So it's going to be cut in those areas. Another word for cut is shear. So this is shear stress. If this clevis were made of string cheese, you would see it being stretched and stretched and stretched and then uh, finally break. But that is, in a, again, in normal stress across this cross section. What's the cross section here? The cross section here is right in that spot. So let's check out what that might look like. Okay, so there is the cross section that's getting cut right there. right in that spot and likewise over here. So this is the spot where the string cheese would get cut and notice how this cross section is parallel with the direction of the force. That's what makes it shear stress. This cross section is normal or perpendicular to the force. Normal is perpendicular in 3D. So this is perpendicular to the force, this is parallel to the force. So this would be in shear stress and this would be in normal stress. So that's the difference between the two. So let's calculate what that shear stress is on the pin. 
And so the pin, if you'll notice, is a 10 millimeter diameter. All right, so the area in shear is, well, it's cross section of a uh, cylinder is pi. Now you might remember that the area of a circle is pi r squared. Well, very often we deal with diameters here. So it's more important to remember this, pi d squared over 4. So take pi times 10 millimeters, and you square it, divide by 4, and you get 78.5 square millimeters. Okay. Thing is, though, we actually have two of these cross sections, one here and one here. So both of those cross sections would have to fail for this whole thing to fail. So this is what's called double shear. And it's a great design technique because you can have something as simple and cheap as a pin and you can have multiple cross sections that have to fail and so they simply multiply out. So in this case we have two so we multiply by two. So our area in shear is actually twice that. So we've got our force which is 30,000 newtons and our area in shear is two times 78.5 square millimeters and that yields 191 megapascals. So in this video we considered a simple setup where there was tension across a cross-section here that was perpendicular or normal to the force and another that was parallel to the force. In so doing, we learn the difference between normal and shear stress. They both have very similar formulas, force over area, but the normal stress is about the area that is normal to the force and the shear stress considers the area that's parallel to the force. We also considered this was double shear. So in our calculations the normal stress ended up being 150 megapascals and the shear stress 191 megapascals. On the side we also learned to translate newtons per square millimeter simply into megapascals through this conversion process. Well, I hope this video helped you understand the difference between normal and shear stresses. Uh, next up is how well uh, they compare to some material properties and uh, further on whether we can design it better.